Hey Mitch, welcome. Freedom Series, week 10. I've got my Mosin-Agant here. It's a 7.62 Russian rifle. Um, they started building them back in the late 1800s and they've been used in most wars since then for, by the Russians. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, got this neat little Quigley down under sight. It's pretty cool. It used to be a sniper rifle, so that's what kind of that's for. But anyway, I got this a few years ago. Wanted to get my hands on a little closer look and feel to what was being used kind of maybe back in the day. So, And today we're going to talk about World War II. Uh, so it was a good fit. I mentioned recently we were up to Lake Brant, and I came across a story I wanted to share with you. Well, that's today. Uh, today is Columbus Day, or Native American Day, Indigenous People Day, uh, whatever it's called these days. But for me, it's a tribute to the early settlers um, of our land. One such individual is a Mr. Ira Hayes. Ira is an American Indian who joined the war, joined our military, uh, the Marines, in the 1940s, and then went to battle in World War II. Uh, Ira went to Iwo Jima, and that picture you see right now is the picture of the six military soldiers that were raising the flag after the ascent of Iwo Jima to signify that the United States was taken over. Keep in mind, this is not a U.S military flex uh, dominance kind of thing um, this is us responding to that particular scenario happening from um, Japan and Germany who were in fact trying to take over the world so anyway shortly after that picture was taken that's the more common one um, they pulled the smattering of individuals that actually survived the climb of Iwo Jima pulled them together here's here's a good share of them um, for this second picture and down on that bottom left, as you look at the picture, you'll see uh, an individual sitting on the ground with his knee up. That's Ira Hayes. That's the Indian Ira Hayes, and we're going to um, talk a little bit more, and you'll hear more about him in the Johnny Cash song here toward the end of this. So Iwo Jima was a terrible battle. It was one of the bloodiest in our history. We sent um, <clears throat> 70,000 soldiers over there, and we had 30, 30 to 35% of those suffered casualties, whether that was wounded or killed in action. Um, Jap Japan had 20,000, over 20,000, the majority of those were killed in action, with only, I think, we took 100 or 200 prisoner, but the rest of them fell in action. So what we were doing in Iwo Jima, it was a sea landing, a sea attack, so we pushed a barrage against the beach we were going into for three days, um, artillery and, and missiles and, and whatnot, to try to clear that out so that our soldiers would be safer as they entered. Um, and then when the soldiers and we started pushing in, we had our, our military equipment coming in, our transports. Um, they were bringing in people, they were bringing in tanks, they were bringing in equipment, supplies, all that stuff. Um, but the beaches weren't nice white sandy beaches like we see in the Caribbean. The island is actually volcanic. And so the beaches were made up of black ash. So as these vehicles came in, if they had tires on them, they immediately buried in the ash. <clears throat> and got themselves stuck uh the the waves were rough that day so pushing them around sideways rolling them over so complete chaos if you can imagine um trying to get in there and what we're trying to do is just get our people and our equipment up there so this went on for a while by the time we had uh just a, a beach full of american soldiers and equipment that's when the japanese opened up and started unloading and they brought in um, mortars and all kinds of artillery and yeah, I mean, in, in history class, you'll learn about, we all learned about the, the bloodiness and the nastiness of it, one of the bloodiest ones we've had. So anyway, as we got through that, uh, we got the beach taken and over and, and ran. We pushed into the rest of the island. That's a, a couple days later is when the climb of Mount Suribachi happened where you're, you saw the flag raised. So anyway, a terrible battle. We lost 7,000 soldiers roughly killed in action. Japan lost 20,000 um, and there were tens of thousands more wounded. So just terrible. I mean, you think it, uh, it's just awful to think about. Um, but it was, it was real and important. Um, so anyway, I mentioned that we went up to the lake this fall and Dave and Andrea Haga had us up. You've met the Hagas. They were at Taryn's wedding. And we went up there to visit. Um, two houses down are the Thurmans. Mike Thurman has a place um, I'm friends with his son Nick Thurman, so we know the Thurmans, and so we were going over to Mike's place. He's got this little uh, man cave in the back, 
with a bar and you know a little poker table and uh, had the guitar and we were gonna have ourselves a fun night as I walked in um, this flag that you see a picture of caught my eye it was just you know that very unique first of all and that picture was interesting I said to Dave what what's this about and Dave said well that's not my story to tell that's that's Mike's so we'll have Mike tell you that when he gets here but, okay that's fine so we went about getting set up and things. A few minutes later, Mike comes in and Dave says, hey, Mike, Tyler's got some questions about your picture. So Mike went into the process of explaining to me and what that picture in the middle is, is that main one we looked at a bit ago, uh, the second picture once the flag was raised on Iwo Jima. And he told me a little bit about some of that. And of course, I was familiar with uh, Ira Hayes and familiar with uh, some of the Iwo Jima battle. Um, but really, what really caught me is when he said, you see that person standing above Ira Hayes with his helmet in the air? That's my brother. So that's Jack Thurman. Jack is Mike's brother. So from Mitchell, South Dakota, that's where they're from. Um, maybe knew my dad back in the day. Uh, here is one of the true American war heroes of the bloodiest, nastiest battle that we've ever had. Uh, wow, so surreal, just really really overtook me. Um, Jack's still alive. He lives in Colorado <clears throat> with his daughter. Um, he's written a book. I would encourage you to take a look at that. But, um, wow. To, you know, to talk to somebody that's that close to what happened there. Really something. So, so anyway, The Ballad of Ira Hayes is a Johnny Cash song. Johnny wrote this um, in tribute to Ira. So we're going to go ahead and go through that today. So a huge thank you to the Thurman family, to you, Mitch, to all of our American heroes and the families that support them. And boy, anybody that's been through something like that, I want to say I can only imagine, but I'm sure my imagination isn't even close to what was experienced um, going on that beach and, and spending that month in Iwo Jima. So anyway, sorry, Jack, for... All the losses I'm sure you took there with the friends um, next to you and in your arms and whatever else happened, but uh, thank you for being a true hero. Mitch, you too. Hope you enjoy this. Ira Hayes. Ira Hayes. Call him drunk. Gather round me, people. There's a story I would tell about a brave young Indian you should remember well. From the land of the Pima Indians, a proud and noble band who farmed the Phoenix Valley down in Arizona land. Down their ditches a thousand years, water grew Iris people's crops till the white man stole the water rights and the sparkling water stopped. Now Ira's folks were hungry, and their land grew crops of weeds. But when the war came, Ira volunteered. He forgot the white man's greed. Called him drunken Ira Hayes. He won't answer anymore. Not the whiskey drinking Indian or the Marine that went to war. They battled up Iwo Jima Hill, 250 men. But only 27 lived walk back down again and when the fight was over and old glory was raised among the men who held her high was the Indian Ira Hayes call him drunken Ira Hayes he won't answer anymore not the whiskey drinking Indian or the marine that went to war Ira Hayes returned a hero and was celebrated through the land he was wine and speeched and honored. Everybody shook his hand. But he was just a Pima Indian. No water, no home, no chance. And at home, nobody cared what Ira had done. When do the Indians dance? Call him drunken Ira Hayes. He won't answer anymore. Not the whiskey drinking Indian or the Marine that went to war. Then Ira started drinking hard jail was off in his home. They'd let him raise the flag and lower it like you'd 
throw the dog a bone. He died drunk early one morning in a land he fought to save. Two inches of water in a lonely ditch was a grave for Ira Hayes. Call him drunken Ira Hayes, he won't answer anymore. Not the whiskey drinking Indian or the marine that went to war. Yeah, I call him drunken Ira Hayes, but the land is just as dry. Ghost is lying thirsty in the ditch where Ira died. Respect out to Ira and everybody that's a member of our service. Mitch, thank you so much. Thurman family, all of you guys for the sacrifices you made and continue to make. Thank you, thank you. God bless every one of you.